Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, as promised, we are going to do the second part of our Da Vinci watercolor review where we're going to take a look at the little sampler card that they sent me. If you caught my last video, we took a complete look at all the colors that Victor has sent me um, in a 24 color set and here I have another 24 colors in the sampler that the company sent me. Now some of the colors repeat, I believe there are not eight or nine of them that are repeated colors. I really like the way that this sample palette is laid out. It has all of the names and pigment information in the top half on the lid. And then it has a little cardboard um, palette that has little wells carved out of it for the paint samples. Now, as we talked about in the initial review, Da Vinci watercolors are really fantastic at rewetting, so it's no problem at all when I am putting water to these dots. There was only one I think that gave me any trouble at all, and that was the ultramarine violet, which has a tendency to be a little harder to rewet. Um, so in this video, I'm just going to be swatching out each of the colors here so that you can see them. I do apologize. I wanted to do a real-time video with this with my... Uh, audio being recorded at the same time. However, when I was recording this, there was so much going on in my apartment complex. There was TV and music from another unit and there was noise outside. So there was just no way that I could get a clear audio for you. So I hope it's okay that I'm going over it now. The first color here is cadmium yellow, which is PY35. I was kind of excited to be able to try little samples of these as I don't have very many cadmium colors at all in my collection due to the toxicity of them. They're not colors that I would consider adding to my own personal palette, but it was nice to see them in person. I will also say that for the most part these cadmium colors were fairly transparent from what I understand that they typically are when you're painting with them. Uh, the most opaque color of the entire set, the entire 24 colors here, was the cadmium red light. Again, though, that is to be expected. All in all, really nice, uh, beautiful, vibrant colors. This second color here is Hansi Yellow Light using PY3. This is one that I did have in the original sampling that I did in the last video. The third color is cadmium yellow medium. Now this is a really pretty color. I do like my warm yellows quite a bit and this would be comparable to either a Hansi Yellow Deep or a New Gamboge. This one is a little bit more opaque as I mentioned but the Da Vinci version is really really nice and moderately transparent for what it is. I am going to speed up the footage a little bit here so that we're not sitting here all day, um, but the next color that we are looking at is Hansa Yellow Deep. This is made from PY65. It's comparable to the Cadmium Yellow Medium, although this is a bit more on the orange side. And as you may have remembered, I had a similar color in the set from Victor, the Arlied Yellow made from the same pigment, PY65. I've never seen a company offer two versions of that particular pigment uh, in different varieties. They're very similar in hue, however, I did mention in the first video that the Arlied Yellow seemed a little bit flat. Uh, here you can see it on the cupcake and uh, made from the same pigment. And I do find that the Hansa Yellow Deep is a little bit more, um, has a little bit more luminosity or depth to the color. I'm not sure how to really um, mention that any further other than I just prefer the Hansa Yellow Deep a tiny bit for the way it interacts with water. Next up we have Da Vinci's Orange made from PO73. This is a version of um, Pyrrole Orange and we'll take a look at this as well as the other colors at the end of the video in comparison to other brands. Uh, following that we've got Cadmium Red Light which I mentioned before is the uh, most opaque paint in this entire little sampler um, but that's to be expected with the Cadmium colors. All the Cadmium Reds are kind of this deeper more opaque version. Then we've got PR254 Da Vinci Red, also Pyrrole Red, and this I have in a lot of other brands. I'm very well familiar with it, and it's pretty much the same as those other paints that I've used. It's a little bit on the opaque side, but not too bad. Then we've got PR209 Quinacridone Red. This is a color that Victor also sent, and one that I'm trying to get more familiar with, other than the paints that I've received in the recent months. I've never used Quinacridone Red before, and I'm having fun getting to know it a little bit better. It's a very transparent, uh, kind of middle-of-the-road red. I would say that it falls right in between the warmer reds and then uh, before you start to turn into the cooler reds of the Quinacridone Rose. 
Then we've got Rose Red Deep, which is PV19. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a pink tone, very similar to a quinacridone rose from other companies. Then we've got the Opus Vivid Pink made from PR122. This reminds me of the very, very bright opera rose that I've seen from other companies. I don't use this color, so I can't let you know how it stacks up with to other brands because I don't have much for comparison. Uh, I do know that it is a only only a moderately light fast pigment, but it is still marked light fast of two instead of three using Da Vinci's scale. We've got Ultramarine Violet here. This is the one that I said was a little bit hard to re-wet, um, but the only one on the palette that was. It's kind of a bluishy purple and it granulates as you might expect an Ultramarine to. Then we have a very vibrant shade of purple. Um, it's called the Vinci Violet. It's a dioxazine violet made from PV23. It is super, super, super saturated and a really, really deep, beautiful color. Following the dioxazine violet, we've got a cobalt blue made from PB28. Now, this color in the first video that I did, the one that I have from the tube, didn't seem too much different than the ultramarine. They were very, very similar in color. However, on this sampler, it is definitively a brighter, lighter blue color that still granulates really lovely, but you can see here now that I'm putting the ultramarine blue next to it that they are very different colors. Um, I don't know if they changed their formula or the way that they are processing it. I know that these are made in small batches, so there is some variety from one to the next, but I also know that they are pretty well acclaimed for having uh, consistency between their batches. So I actually prefer the cobalt blue on the sampler because I feel like it would um, kind of earn its own spot on a palette versus the one that I have from uh, the previous collection of 24 that I didn't really feel added a whole lot to get its own spot in addition to ultramarine. Then we've got Cobalt Turquoise made from PB36. This is a beautiful version of Cobalt Turquoise. I talked about this color a lot recently when I did my Revisiting M. Graham video and I had recently purchased their version of uh, Cobalt Turquoise, which I believe is made from PG50 instead of PB36. Uh, they're both very similar in color and we will take a look at them again uh, at the end of this video. Then we've got our standard Thalo Green PG7. It's a beautiful variety, very transparent, um, pretty much the same as other versions. <laughs> we've got the Hooker's Green Light made from PG7 and PY42. This is a really nice mossy sap green that's a little bit brighter than other sap greens that I've used. So I think it'd be a good alternative for people who want something a little bit more on the greener side of sap green. Following Hooker Green Light, we've got Leaf Green made from PG7 and PY65. This is the really, really, really bright green that we had in the other video as well. Again, I don't have a whole lot of use for this color, but I could see how someone might. Um, then we've got their version of Yellow Ochre, which again, if you haven't seen my collaboration with Sade at Sadie Saves the Day, be sure to check out the video on her channel for my color spotlight on Yellow Ochre. I talked a lot about this pigment. Da Vinci's version is the more opaque version made from PY43. I don't particularly care for their version of it, but I do have other alternatives in that video if you'd like to check it out. Next up, we have Quinacridone Gold made from PY150 and PR206. This is an interesting combination of Quinacridone Gold that we don't see often in these mixtures. It is definitely more on the orange side than the gold side. Then we've got Burnt Sienna Deep made from PR101. This is uh, kind of similar to Transparent Red Iron Oxides. Uh, it's a really, really lovely color, very vibrant, and I look forward to trying it out in um, some different mixes. Then we've got Terracotta made from PR102. This looks similar to me as like a Venetian red somewhere in that family, but it is a little bit more on the orange side than on the red side. And when it dries, it's actually not that opaque. Then we've got our Burnt Umber from PBR7. Very, very standard Burnt Umber. I really like the depth of the color and it's a bit on the warmer side of our warmer Burnt Umbers. The last color on this little palette is Payne's Gray from PBK6 and PBR7. It's a really nice alternative to black that has a little bit more depth and variety in it. 
So this set is available on DaVinci's website for $6.99. And as you can see here, even after doing all of the swatches, I still have plenty of pigment left to go ahead and do some more mixes or even paint a little painting. And um, I would highly recommend it. I think it's a really good value for $7 to be able to try out a whole bunch of their colors. Um, here I'm just going to go ahead and show you an up close look at all the colors. You can see how transparent they are overall. The only pigment that was a little bit funky in the way it reacted to this Strathmore 500 paper was the Da Vinci Violet. I do find that the Strathmore 500 does tend to cause this kind of texture with some a variety of pigments across different brands, but with the Da Vinci's, the only one that I really noticed it was strongly was the Dioxazine Violet. Um, you can usually combat this by putting an extra layer over the top when you're glazing and the Strathmore kind of uh, mellows out after that. So I'm not sure if it's more of an issue with the pigment or with the paper itself. So the other thing that was requested when I did the first video was doing my normal side-by-side -side comparisons of all the Da Vinci pigments from that video and uh, comparing them against my swatch finder. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Here I've got the Hansa Yellow Light uh, PY3. It's pretty middle of the road as far as this color goes. I think it's a bit on the cooler side, especially compared to Daniel Smith's Hansa Yellow Light. Uh, but it's what you'd expect out of a lemon yellow in general. Then we've got the Arlide Yellow Deep, the PY65, that I feel is a little bit on the flatter side. I prefer Daniel Smith's Hansa Yellow or even Da Vinci's Hansa Yellow that we talked about earlier. Uh, for my orange lovers here on the channel, I do have the little sample swatch of paint uh, that I took from this, the new sampler with PO73 to compare it to the other versions. Um, it's similar in hue to Turner's Pyro Orange or Mission Gold's Red Orange, although I did find the Da Vinci's to be a little bit less saturated, closer to the Sennelier version. I still had these samples out from when I had done the first video of the Quinacridone Red, so I have to go ahead and put those in the swatch binder really, really quickly. Um, but those are pretty comparable to other brands. Again, my least favorite version of this color comes from Mission Gold, but all the other ones are pretty darn comparable. I think that I prefer either the American Journey or the, Quin uh, the Sennelier version, but Da Vinci is right there with it. We've got the PR254 Pyrol Red, also Windsor Red in Windsor Newton. Very comparable to those pigments as well. Next up we have our PB19s in the Rose Red Deep and Alizarin Crimson. The Rose Red Deep is very similar to Permanent Rose or Quinacridone Rose from other brands. It's a beautiful magenta color that you can use in your mixing uh, to give you a wide range of uh, colors in a triad. Then we also have Da Vinci's Alizarin Crimson, which is very unique to this PB19 color. It's the only brand that I have seen um, with this depth and intensity to it. Sennelier does have a version that's somewhat similar to it in the Carmine, but you do have to layer it in order to get the depth of color there. It is similar to a Daniel Smith Carmine or an original Alizarin Crimson. Then we've got Da Vinci's Quinacridone Violet, which if you put it next to the other PV19s is very, very blue. It's very much on the pink uh, slash violet side of things. I'm also looking for my Quinacridone Purple sample from Schminka, which is made from PV55. You can see that these definitely are not the same color, so you don't want to get those confused. But the Schminka version is definitely more on the blue side, while the Quinacridone Violet from Da Vinci actually looks pink next to it. If you put that same sample next to some reds, it will look very much on the blue side. Next up is our actual purple page. We've got the Da Vinci Mauve is on the sample over here in the bottom left hand corner. That was from the original set. Uh, it's very much on the muted purple side. And then we also did the sampler of the Da Vinci Violet on today's sampler card, and that is comparable to the Dioxazine Purple. I do much prefer Core's version to this color. It is so deep and so vibrant that um, I don't know that any other brand can really rival Core for me at this particular moment. We've got Da Vinci's Ultramarine here, which does have a very, very mild granulation pattern. If you're someone who doesn't like as much granulation in your paints, I could definitely recommend it. Uh, it's very comparable to the M. Graham Ultramarine, and I think I prefer either of those two brands or the Daniel Smith variety. All of them are really great versions. As I mentioned before, the Cobalt Blue in my original samples was very, very close to Ultramarine with uh, only some slight differences after it dried. Although um, the newer sampler version that we saw today is much closer to the cobalt blue that I have seen from other brands. 
Da Vinci also has a manganese blue, which is partially PB33, which is the genuine pigment for this color, and then they also add PB15 to it as well. I had some people ask about this on social media, and I would, I'm just guessing here, but if I had to guess, I would imagine that it's just a cost-saving mechanism because the original pigment is very expensive, and by cutting it with a cheaper pigment like PB15, it can go a lot further. It does compare to other PB33s that I've seen fairly well, and you can see here it's a nice alternative to cerulean blue as well. I also have the Prussian Blue, of course, which is PB27. The Da Vinci version is very similar to um, kind of a mixture between the M. Graham and the Rembrandt, all three of which I think are great versions for this color. The Rembrandt is so far the um, cleanest glazing version that I have used. The Thala Blue from them is fairly standard, though I do have to say it's a bit on the cooler side towards green um, than it is towards red than some other Thala Blues that I've seen. So if you want to differentiate your cool and warm blues by having an ultramarine and a Thala Blue, I think Da Vinci's is a really nice brand because it even puts a little bit more separation in between those colors. I believe earlier that I mentioned that their PB36 is their version of Cobalt Teal, and I thought that M. Graham's version was PG50. I was mistaken, that is the Daniel Smith variety. M. Graham's version is from PB28, and that is very comparable to this version from Da Vinci. Uh, I think both are really beautiful colors, and either one is just fine. Um, here in the United States, at least, they're fairly comparable in price, uh, but they're a nice alternative, I think, to some of the more expensive brands. Da Vinci's Thalo Green here. A bit similarly to how their Thalo Blue is a little bit closer to green, I would say that their, uh, their Thalo Green is a little bit closer to green as well with a little less hint of blue and a little bit more hint of the yellow. We've got that really bright uh, kind of pow in your face <laughs> leaf green made from PG7 and PY65. This is a color that you could easily mix using the Thalo Green and the Hans Yellow Deep on your palette, but if you want a whole tube of it for a convenience color, I don't see why you wouldn't want to choose this one, and I have it compared to some other brands similar colors, but not directly comparable. I did want to show you the Hooker's Green Light compared to other sap greens, because I know I compared it to a sap green. It definitely is on the bluer side of things, but um, I have it here next to Schmincke's Permanent Green Olive, which it is very, very close to. And if you want it to be more on the golden mossy side, you could add a little bit of quinacridone gold to it. We talked a bit earlier about how their yellow ochre is fairly comparable to the more opaque varieties of PY43 like American Journeys. You can go ahead and see a full comparison again over on CD Saves the Day channel for the collaboration videos that we did together. I do still prefer Daniel Smith's yellow ochre compared to these other varieties. Da Vinci's Quinacridone Gold, as I mentioned before, is a lot more on the orange side than some other Quinacridone Gold varieties. It's kind of in between if you took a quinacridone gold and a quinacridone burnt orange, like right in between those two colors, you would find Da Vinci's version of quinacridone gold. It is not made from PO48 though, surprisingly, like a lot of other brands are. Um, it is made from PR206 and perhaps that's why it's a little bit more on the orange side. I also have that version of Burnt Sienna, thanks to one of my viewers who sent me over a generous sample card of it, and this is actually my favorite version of Burnt Sienna that I've seen from any brand. I typically use Daniel Smith's variety, and that's what I still have on my palette because I had a bunch left over, but the next time I purchase a Burnt Sienna, it's definitely going to be from Da Vinci. Their version of PR101 is really interesting. I feel like it falls in between the transparent versions of PR101 and the more opaque ones like the Venetian Red or the Terra Rosa. Um, it has a really interesting textural property as well, so it's certainly something that you could play with if you are interested in that. Then we've got the Terracotta, which I was hoping was similar to a Terra Rosa, but it's definitely more on the Terracotta, like a Terracotta pot side of things. Uh, it's a really accurate description of the name. It's a bit opaque when you first put it down, but it dries to be fairly, or moderately transparent, I guess I'll say. Wrapping up the tail end of things, we've got that Burnt Umber, which I did mention earlier is a bit warmer than the other Burnt Umber varieties, so if you're a fan of warm browns, I definitely recommend this pigment. If you want something on the cooler side, you might want to go with something like the My Mary Blue version or a raw umber altogether. Speaking of cool browns, we've got sepia from Da Vinci, which falls right smack dab in the middle between Sennelier's warm sepia and their sepia brown. Uh, it's right in between those two if you wanted a nice happy medium. 
definitely warmer though than the Van Dyke Brown from Rembrandt. And finally, wrapping up, we've got the Payne's Gray version, which is made from two pigments, PB27 and PBK6. And um, it's comparable in hue, I think, to the Sennelier version of Payne's Gray. Although the Sennelier version layers better, the Da Vinci version is only made with two pigments, so it's really up to what you want on your palette. And that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. I hope that this video gave you a good idea of what Da Vinci paints look like stacked up next to their competitors and can help you make decisions when you are going to fill your palette as well. If you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that I know you enjoyed it. And you can let me know in the comments below what your favorite Da Vinci paints are. I want to thank all of my patrons, of course, as always, for supporting this content. For all of you who are watching, don't forget to press that subscribe button or the little bell icon if you'd like to see more from me. And I will see you next time.